Welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have everybody back once again. This is the first episode of our new season. How about that? Show began in 2006. It's a slow morning. My brain's not functioning as well. So you can do the math right there, folks, to figure out how many years that is that Face the Facts has been in existence. But I want to welcome you all here once again. I am Nick Face. Joining me are our two regulars that are with us all the time, Phil Healy, NorCam Program Coordinator, Jack of All Trades, and we also have Tom Smith by the Empower Wall joining us here today. So Tom's got a new background as well. Hi, everybody. Hey, how's it going? We're doing. We're doing what we can. There's a lot of things happening in sports. And we want to talk about all that, but I also want to say, hi, Tom. How you doing, Tom? Hi, hi. How are we doing? Oh, good. Good. Tom speaks. I just wanted to make sure that we knew. <laughs> we knew we knew he's, he was in existence. Sorry, I was, I was being uh, talked to off, off screen, so. Gotcha. We picked a great time to be talking about our teams that are happening right now in Boston sports that have a lot of things that are happening. We've got the Patriots in season, the Bruins at their training camp starting now, all kinds of commotion going on with those Boston Celtics. And then we'll give the Red Sox four seat today in their talk abouts on there on this show. I do want to start our program off talking about the new England Patriots. I actually have not got a chance to watch much of them this season, but I do have to say, I am not that excited about this team. I don't know how much you guys have been able to talk about or see or talk relating to uh, what's going on with the the New England Patriots, but they're one and one. They definitely have a lot of things they got to, they got to work on. Yeah. I I haven't really watched them uh, that much. I've more listened to them actually uh, with the car with the little guy, Uh, but I did watch a little bit of the first – actually, I watched a decent chunk of the first game, but it was just like, I don't know, man. What know. what offense do they have? Yeah, I mean, um, they're improving. Week by week, they're improving slowly but surely. Uh, so, I mean, who knows, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, they do have a tough last two games of the season. Uh, with Miami and Buffalo being their last games to finish up the season. So hopefully they can improve by then enough to be able to at least get a good game against both teams. So my big takeaway here is that there are a lot of pieces that are missing at wide receiver in particular. The Patriots are ranked right now between the two games, almost dead last in the league with any kind of receptions and production from anybody on the receiving core. A lot of people put some stock into the Devontae Parker signing, thinking that it was going to be such a great idea. What a low risk kind of signing and everything like that. I never was a believer. I'm not going to be a believer. I don't think this guy's going to do diddly squat for this team this season. So anybody that was hyped up about Devontae Parker, sorry to be Mr. Doomsday here, but get us reality slap. He's not going to do anything. So Seeing what the, this team is going to do, I'm I'm still sticking to my word. I don't think this team wins more than five games this season. I really don't. Not with what they got on the football field. Um, I just want to point out that so far I'm I'm two for two on what I, I mentioned in um, in our little podcast that we started doing. I said that they would most likely lose to Miami. And they should be able to beat Pittsburgh. So, so far, two for two. Just, just want to point that out. Um, but, I mean, Pittsburgh isn't looking that great either. So, um, and they, we definitely would have lost if Pittsburgh had TJ Watt. So, that was another big thing. Remember, too, that this week is a big one for the Patriots. We play the Baltimore Ravens. That's Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson's team, and who knows uh, what what's going to happen from from anything on that side. I don't have much confidence in a in a victory coming from uh, this pat this Sunday. Yeah, Lamar has a bad elbow. So. Oh, he he's not in. 
Okay. Well, no, he is in, but he's wearing a he's wearing a sleeve to protect his elbow. His arm. His I'll, arm. I'll still take a chance with a bad yeah. elbow with him. I, I still and, see Baltimore coming out victorious in the game. I mean, it's been a it's been a crazy season this year for all all teams in in the league with the uh, all these crazy comebacks going on in the first two weeks. Oh, we can't hear you, Phil. Phil's resetting. While Phil, let's see if that works now. Nope, can't hear you, Phil. <laughs> Technical difficulties. On Permanently the muted. <laughs> so as soon as uh, we get here, right, can you hear me? Okay. Now, now we can hear you. Right, there, you there he is. Hello, hello, hello. He's just a, he's just a mime in existence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Can you, you get, get out, out of your box, please? No, here we My go. Mental box. Listen, they scored uh, – Miami and Baltimore scored like almost 80 points last week. And it's just kind of like, what? And uh, the Patriots have scored uh, – 24. 24, that's right. 24 Woo. in two games. Uh, against – what? all right, Miami – I guess, does Miami have a good defense? Didn't look like it. The, uh, and does uh, Pittsburgh have a good defense? Okay, but like you said, they didn't have T.J. Watt. So, I mean, and one one uh, touchdown came on a botch uh, punt. So, I mean, deep, offense isn't everything, but you're going to need it to actually win some games here. Well, to, to put it this way, I mean, the offense didn't look too great for the Patriots in week two. It did not look – it looked awful, god-awful in week one. I would give it a rating of a zero point zero 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 two on a scale of one to ten um i i think it i mean it, like i said it improved the defense definitely got a lot better between week one and week oh we lost you a bit tom uh oh he's in the the vortex Well, John, I'm sure you can hear me at least. So Tom's takeaway was just how the offense was just not anywhere of existence in the past, especially week one. Last week, not really that great again. A lot of this I have to chalk up to what's coming from the offensive coordinator, that being Matt Patricia. I have a very hard time believing that this team is going to go anywhere with that hack job as your offensive coordinator. Sorry to be critical. Sorry to be harsh, but this Wait, is- Wait, are we uh, talking about the offense coordinator or the, off uh, the offensive line coach? Offensive coordinator. Even offensive line coach is- Who knows who that is? They're Wait, the, well, that, apparently they're the same guy. Right. Is Wait, it Joe Judge? Is it Matt? We don't know. Yeah, I, I was going to say, is Matt Patricia really the offensive coordinator or is it Joe Judge? We don't again. Bill, Bill won't Belcher. even let us know. Where's the Bill thought, and I Bill, we Judge trust. Was, I don't yeah. trust Bill. Ever since Brady left the building, I'm sorry, I don't. And yeah, then I Mac mean, can be yeah. Mac can be as frustrated as he wants because Josh McDaniels isn't there either. Josh McDaniels is one of the most overrated personnel people in the game. Like, get over yourself. Throw the football, put it in the end zone, and score. You don't need a freaking offensive coordinator to go and put points up like this pity party from the Patriots. I'm so sick of it. Nut up, get on the field and go play. Like this is not what we've seen over the years with the Bill Belichick team. It was the Patriot way. It was finding working through adversity. It was figuring out whatever it's going to take to get to that next level. We've got a bunch of little wine and wusses out there on the football field. Good God, sack up and get out there and play. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think – sorry, Phil, go ahead. Um, go for so I, I think they were kind of overkill with the running. Um, they, they probably could have done a little more play action uh, and, you know, a little more with the passing. I mean, you had Nelson Aguilar make a great catch there for the touchdown. Um, over the defensive back. Um, but, I mean, da Damian Harris had a good game, which was nice to see, uh, considering that he didn't really have a great season last year. I mean, he did, but 
not not what everybody expected it to be. Um, but yeah, that run game really really carried the offense against Pittsburgh for the most part. And then also Kendrick Bourne was in the doghouse for a little bit because he had a disagreement of sorts with how the offense was being run. What a shock. But did he even get a touch? Did he even get a target? He had a big play, I think, in last week's game. And Robert Kraft came out and said, oh, that's somebody that should be a big part of our offense. Well, he was getting punished by Matty P. Yeah, and Jacoby Myers had a big game, too, in week two as well. So, Yeah, he's Uh, a constant, Jacoby Myers. Yeah, Mac Jones is kind of spreading the ball around a little more, but he's still not – I still don't think he knows how to throw a football to a receiver right now. I think he's too frustrated with the tools he has around him to succeed right now. And I think that frustration that we saw from training camp and into the first couple weeks is translated over into this season. He knows it's going to be a different process than it was last year. Mindset-wise – He needs to come in full confidence, develop those receivers, get on the same page so they can achieve greatness. And that right there is something they're going to need to really dig down deep. I think this helped get a little bit of confidence going from this last week with Pittsburgh getting that win. But this is a bigger test now. This is a much bigger test for week three here. It's take it to the next level. See if you can get on the same page with somebody and make it work. Yeah, they have to just <laughs> keep grinding them out. All these games are going to be a grind. Nothing's going to yeah. be easy for this team. I mean, th- uh, where are they dominant? In what area of the uh, of the game are they dominant? Or at least at least really, really good? I guess you can make a case that... Um, I would say they're dominant play. in the concession stands, the broadcast yeah. booth, the front office, I guess, with Rob Kraft as ownership, player-wise. I still don't believe Mac Jones is your future. I still don't believe that. Well, he hasn't really given us any reason to believe that. And that's why some people like, oh, yeah, we got the next Tom Brady here. They're a parent here. or He's going to be here for many, many. Put your brakes on, please. Put your brakes on. Who's saying that? Some of them, some media people out there. Oh, Mac is going to transition well in the offense. He's going to lead this team back to the Brady championship style football. Hey, Put your pom poms to... away, produce on, on the field, and then show us fan base that you can be successful. Not to be that Patino jerk. Yeah, win a championship, win a playoff game. Yeah. Hey, uh, not to be that Patino jerk, but Tom Brady isn't coming through Lowe's uh, doors. You know, you're not, you know, well, no, yeah, he's not coming through Lowe's doors. Uh, Terry, me, that's my the there he is. Hi, Tom. There we go. Tom, is that you? Tom, oh, just come back, F off? All come right, back please. Off. Let's make it happen. But, um, we got you, Bubby. That that's know. where we're at with all of our things that are that are going on. I do want to transition and talk about Brady and the Bucks because they deserve uh, some some time to chat about what it's been like for two games for them. So they're two and oh, but. Tom has been destroying Microsoft Surface iPads or whatever you want to call them uh, in, in pre- pretty much regularity from the beginning of this season. There's a lot going on with Tom in his personal life. I think you're seeing the emotions play themselves into the football game. I don't know if any of you seen any of his press conferences and just how he looks. He looks very skinny, like he's not eating or doing what the Brady method has been through so many years and I think it's taken a toll on him personally. I think a lot of this has to do with something going on behind closed doors with him and and, um, Giselle. I think that she kind of gave him an ultimatum. It's me or football. He chose football and Tom is on his own right now for the most part. He's in the guest house. TMZ here and be Mr. Uh, uh, Paparazzi, but it does look like, it's not looking well with the uh, Brady and Giselle relationship. Yeah. I mean, you could even see it in the New Orleans. I mean, I know Tampa and New Orleans have a big rivalry, um, but I mean, you could really see it come out in that, in that bench clearing uh, or sideline clearing brawl, if you would want to call it that, because it really wasn't much of a brawl. 
Um, but I mean, you could kind of see through his helmet that he was, uh, he was getting more upset than he typically does. Now, there's a lot of behind the scenes things going on with these box, this box team. And if they're going to be a championship, this outside noise, it's becoming a distraction. It's not showing up in the win loss column from everything, but they got to block this out. If Brady wants to play football, I know it's his personal life and everything. You got to leave that at the door. Check it there. Take care of what you can on the football field. Let's jump. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm with you. The whole thing. I don't know how much of a distraction it is. I know he's already, he's been a distraction since he's been there because he's been able to up his uh, pampering. Uh, from when he was with the Pats. I mean, he essentially, remember he talked about, oh, I'm not going to uh, work out or practice on Thursdays. Yep. That was a thing. And apparently he was practicing yesterday, or Wednesdays, I'm sorry. And apparently, yeah, apparently Wednesdays, he was practicing yesterday. I guess, is the, uh, the day off for Tom. The self-cleanse. Yep. But I don't, uh, yeah, I, I think he, I think the rest of the team will live with it. Uh, maybe, and that's the price you pay, you know, at this point. But uh, yeah, I think I think you are right. There's more added to that pile of uh, distraction. But I don't know. Uh, when it comes down to crunch time, we'll we'll see what happens, and we'll see if he holds up. You know, knock on wood. If he holds up uh, health wise, like you say, he's kind of a little gone, and he's almost looks like he's been you know foraging for. I mean, I'm not feeling sorry for the guy. He's got enough money to do whatever. But I mean, I do feel bad if his family's breaking up. That's horrible. But I mean. Uh, hey, let, he can let's, take care let's, of himself. Let's be honest here. I mean, this isn't a money situation with Brady. He may, can make more money if he's in the broadcast booth for Fox right now than what he's dealing with right now with and with starting that contract whenever he retires and all. This is about him, I think, trying to stick to his word with playing till he's at least 45. I think that playoff run last season for the Bucks when they exited quickly really played a factor into this. I really strongly believe Brady wants one more championship and then right off into the sun. That's what I think his desire is. And yeah. I think that's why he still has the itch to play. Well, that's, that's what we've been saying since before the Patriots, at least like the season before. Anyway, that's what we've been saying since. Um, but I mean, to the fact about, you know, how, how he's looking and what he's going through and everything this, this week, this game coming up in week three is going to be a big test. That I mean, it's going to be the true, uh, true testament to it because they're playing the Packers, and that's. I mean, the Saints are a tough opponent for them, uh, more so in the playoffs. But I mean, this this Packers team is um, they're starting to you know connect with each other. Oh, of course, you have a lot of new rookies in there. Aaron Rodgers and everything right there. So of course, that's going to add the hype level there. Brady, yeah. Brady versus Rodgers and everything. So. I think that's going to be their biggest game that they've had really yet. I mean, you could say the Cowboys was the Cowboys are a joke. They were yeah. Joke. What's the deal with what's the deal with the Cowboys? I thought they were like ready to go this year. I well, thought they were like well, uh, Dak got hurt. Well, I mean, even then, even in that game, like w- were they really pushing it? That Cowboys game? are always a lot of hype, a lot of talk. Yeah, you can't back it up. Well, I they. Mean, I mean, that broadcast. Oh, like starting out and they the first they were they had no sound and then they started the broadcasting. Amazon broadcast that started out the Thursday. Yeah, that was. It was the new Amazon thing. No, it was NBC. Oh, that's right. That's when Collinsworth didn't have a voice. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean you official a good oh. uh, transition I wanted to talk about next. And that's with all these changes that have happened in the broadcasting uh, channels and players that are now a part of different broadcasts. So in case people don't know. Really, the only consistent pair that's really stuck was Jim Nance, uh, Jim Nance, and uh, Tony Romo for CBS. Well, Troy Aikman and, and Joe Buck. Kevin Burkhart, and I think it's Greg Olson as their leads. It's really weird hearing Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on Monday Night Football. That's weird for ESPN. Still got to get used to that. You got yeah, Amazon with Al there. Michaels, and is it Curb Street? I think Curb Street, something like yeah. that. Curb Street. And you have Curb NBC Street. with Tarico and. My favorite person in the whole entire. Oh, so Chrissy Collinsworth. So Collinsworth yeah, and let me, um, let me do the. I got to do the Collinsworth broke up? slide. Excuse well, me. Well, then I mean, Amazon owns NBC, yeah. so they kind of. Hi, everybody. Up. I'm Chris hey. Collinsworth. <laughs> He's like a muppet. Yeah, he, he is a muppet. I think I'd rather listen to Kermit than him. 
I mean, Kermit's got some good insight. That's right. Well, Miss Piggy, I'd rather listen to her. She played college ball. She could. Skin. She could. Maybe she'll be the quarterback for the Cowboys. Maybe that'll oh. lead them to victory. Yeah, who, who's the QB for the Cowboys right now? I was hearing exactly. rumbles that it was going to be um, our favorite kneeler, Colin Kaepernick. Oh, really? That's what I was hearing. Weird. Yeah. yeah what are you going to do? His I'm last name is going to play from his knees. Yeah. His, his last name is Rush. He did. He did pretty good, and I mean, as good as you can as for a Cowboys quarterback. But um, so Dak is out for a while. Not to uh, harp on the Cowboys, but I'm just, I'm just so. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I listen. Uh, everyone in the booth, everyone switched over. I'm still acclimating to just trying to get to watch a game, really. Because how many places can you watch a game? It's like 18 different ways, which is some of it's great. Some oh, of it's all a matter of what ridiculous. you got your bank account. That's what the that's uh, what the deal you is. Go. You got you got to make sure that Apple Card is loaded up, folks. You got a lot of info to put in. You got to put that email. Got to get that text confirmation. Got to make sure that internet's working. Sign up for that Amazon Prime for 109 bucks a year, whatever the heck the price is now. Apple got to make sure that 599 a month is all charged up. Keep getting those subscriptions going. I am sick of it. I'm sick of it. Yeah, I mean, it's... You should be able to put your damn digits into your cable box and boom, the screen should be right there. Yeah, I mean, I... It's got to be some sort of... Some sort of I mean, the screen isn't going wow, away. It's coming out. The screen that, will always be there, Nick. If there's something going on with your screen, you should contact somebody. No, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe a priest or something. He's, he's starting to throw the remote oh, at the screen. And then oh. you have to put all those things in. Yeah, yeah. And pay for this and pay for that. That's our yeah, world. Yeah, no, you're right. right no, there. no. It, every, our it, world. There's, there's a lot of streaming be, apps are caring. Look at baseball. I mean, baseball yeah. does their Friday night Apple broadcast. You're going to pay another whatever it is to watch that stupid red Sox yankee game tomorrow like no i'm not gonna do that that's ridiculous like, actually i mean there are a lot of reasons why i don't want to watch that game oh true <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Aaron yeah. going for, could could be his uh record breaking that's kind of exciting 60 second um home run yeah. i said i was going to do the red Sox and everything yeah. left but i think we'll just transition yeah just get into it well just get them out of the way what a cesspool <laughs> wait is this a, a funeral <laughs> it's going to be a funeral. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Let's play taps. Um, they have two weeks to go on this horrid season, and it's leaving me very speechless on on the direction this team is heading. I'm kind of at a loss for words on how the team still was put together the way it was. I mean, yes, injuries played a big part in this, but. You used good majority of your season, about 40% starting pitching from the Worcester, the Worcester Red Sox that were trying to fill in from stuff. You had a piecemeal bullpen without having a closer to start your year. You had all sorts of different things going on at first base, thinking that Bobby D was going to be your answer. Well, you know what that answer is now. You bring Cassis up, try to get a taste and a cup of coffee of what Major League Baseball is. He's hitting point or 0. 0.53 or something like that. He's like two for 50. So he's improving. <laughs> <That's>, sure. <laughs> yeah. From nothing. I am so a real taste of coffee for the majors. <laughs> of people yeah. in our media that follow this team. I'm going to even throw names out there because I've just about had it with y'all. Pete Abraham, Alex Spear, Chris Cotillo from – Mass live, Jason Mastronato, shut your damn mouth about these prospects in this system for this Red Sox team, thinking they're going to be great because these players come up and they absolutely fall to pieces. It is irresponsible on their part to be hyping up these players, thinking they're going to be wonderful and everything until they prove themselves at the major league level. I'm so tired of it. It gets fans all excited for nothing. And I'm so glad, you know, that they just hype up the Kool-Aid train with what they're talking about. 
But you have to prove yourself at the major league level before you establish yourself as a major league player. The only exception to the rule that I can say that's been at least proving himself a little bit better is this Brian Bayo guy. You know, he's now on the rotation and he's at least his second turn up. He's starting to do a little bit better from everything, but it's got to stop. It's got to stop because it's becoming an embarrassment. Cassis was supposed to be the next uh, Adrian Gonzalez. There you have it. He's he's doing great. (laughs) Which Adrian Gonzalez? (laughs) Uh, like prior stage. to his Red Sox stint, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he actually didn't have as bad of a Red Sox, but yeah, no, he wasn't. He wasn't the player. They, yeah, yeah but they expected the him. You know, get the powers. You're gonna hit for average. Yeah. He's, gonna, he's gonna be amazing, just amazing. Just slot well, him in right now. Yeah. Count him in for 50 home runs. Gonna do. Put All right. brakes on. Well, I will say this. I mean, we've been through the rocky roads of even on the show. You uh, having I haven't watched and put it on North Cameron on the air, not necessarily being on it. But from that time, which seems like ages ago, from when you know got your Carl Crawford and your Adrian Gonzalez as like a a, a, a kind of band aid for a bunch of stuff, and that era where they kind of like a year later they kind of abandon it, and then they get a whole new crop of great center fielders, and they get some of the best in the league, and you have a championship ball club. That dissolves, you know, part of it is, I think, uh, they might have just were kind of, uh, that's a word I'm looking for, kind of hung over from the championship year, Mm -hmm. but also just didn't take care of themselves on on the offseason as much. And uh, part of it's luck, too, because Sale was injured. But and then also they just kind of mortgaged off their future and just sold everything off. And then they just didn't want to pay anymore. So they were either uh, putting their money on other uh, professional sport, uh, sport uh, you know, teams. In different leagues like the penguins or you know uh football teams in uh england or in europe and then they bring in something like oh no we want to be the tampa bay Rays. we want to be we want to spend that, less to get more. bloom that that's who they Which, hide. honestly like hey that's not the worst but like you say if you have all these prospects and you're going to tout them off as these big ticket items just like be prepared for you know your lashings or uh for a little bit of talk back because if they don't fulfill it and you're really hyping it especially if you're part of the media and you know i know the media has got to talk about something for like 24 hours for god's sake and we don't need it we don't we don't need 24 hours i always I like to call it filler it's filler yeah 100 percent. let's fluff it up so the fan yeah. base can get behind us and and, and put their <clears throat> pom-poms together and cheer on this wonderful team that we put together you know i like i like the honesty i like people to if there's an issue, you address it and you let the fan base know you're going to do everything you can to fix it. I don't get that vibe when I hear Sam Kennedy talk, Heim Bloom, and I understand that it's a business and I understand that there's some things they don't want to tell, you know, the fans to kind of get them stuff together. But I feel like everything out of their damn mouths is a lie, just a lie. Oh, yeah, Xander's coming back. We really believe in him. He's our leader. He's going to be a captain. We're going to have him next season. How can I believe that out of the mouth of Kennedy or Bloom, for the matter? Because they're, they're a lot of talk. There's no action behind that. All we know is that there's a really ticked off clubhouse down at Fenway Park. And that's not good for the direction this team is heading. And I think a lot of this also comes from, I don't know how much you guys have heard the rumblings of behind the scenes on players being very frustrated with the direction that the team is headed with management. So we had Christian Vasquez traded at the deadline. One of those heart and soul guys in that clubhouse that shocked the clubhouse because they felt if Vasquez is getting traded, then that must mean Evaldi and JD Martinez and some other names are going to be gone, but they just did it to Vasquez and they really didn't in a way replace that veteran leader that was there. This past week, they released Kevin Pilecki as a veteran kind of backup catcher that was behind the clubhouse cart and developed a great relationship with the cl- with the team and everything. Those are those are players that are so valuable to where your team is going to be headed, and Bloom has stripped that away from them. And I personally think that Alex Cora is the reason why a lot of these players are talking now about not being happy with how your team is. 
And there's some people that are out there. They're going to say, you know what? Play ball, figure it out. You guys are the ones that fell on your face and didn't do the job. So if you lose certain players, it's all on you. I understand that side of things, but I also get the point of having players that really believe in a team that become a close, a, a, a close knit group, kind of like a family. You had that with 20, uh, the 2013 team in particular, you know, that was a lot of character guys, a lot of character guys that were there between uh, just so much care and so much. I want to play for these people 20, uh, 2018 was a lot like that too. This team has gotten rid of Mookie Betts. You have an uncertainty where Rafi Devers is going to be. You have an uncertainty where Xander Bogarts is going to be, Nate Evaldi, J.D. Martinez. So I think these guys are, are, are voicing their frustration that the Red Sox haven't figured out what the heck is actually going to be happening with this team. So that's kind of my take on what, the things look like for the Red Sox right now. And it doesn't seem, doesn't look too promising for the future on, on where things are headed. Yeah. I love where they're going. Hmm. No, I, no, well, I, <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. The golf course. Is that what you said? Yeah. The golf course. Yeah. Uh, listen, yeah. hundred percent. I, uh, listen, I grew up, I'm a little older than you guys. I not, by too much i am ancient but i remember the dirt dogs i remember trot nixon yep i remember those days when you know they they could contend they wouldn't and you didn't have two uh didn't have two wild card games that actually was the beginning when you only had one wild card team it actually was a couple of years into that but um yeah there's uh, there are times like now we're not and it was oh it was a uh it was uh the yaki uh, owners too and even Right after that, like even the beginning of this ownership's tenure, they're a little bit more up, you had identity about guys face about it. They had identity guys. They're more about face. They more uh, less. You know, it was a baseball thing. It was a baseball attitude. And I know the game has changed dramatically. And but to be fair, baseball has always really been about numbers and statistics. Mm -hmm. But also, you need people who, like you say, character guys and people who are there. And I, it looks like there might, you know, you get rid of Vasquez and Pilecki and who else is. Who else is next? And I know this is the business and they're just going to uh, lob off whoever, but I think yeah. that's how a lot of the players in that clubhouse are feeling. Who's next. Who's the next cast off. Yeah. But rightfully I so, listen, rightfully so to a lot of them. Yeah. But I'm excited. I uh, earnestly am excited for the playoffs. I always uh, baseball playoffs, MLB playoffs. Uh, I sometimes I like it even more than football uh, yep. playoffs because there's a lot more. It seems like there's a lot more at stake for each little thing. Football can kind of go basketball the same. I actually like basketball. Maybe the second best or the most. That's my that's my sport. But baseball playoffs is like this time of year when it's going down to it and see who's going to make it. Kind of great. And it's sad that the Especially Sox the aren't really. play in games when they were having them in the past. Yeah. With Amazing. Drama coming down to the one game to yeah. get that team into the playoffs and everything. So that, that'll that be here in the next few weeks to look at. At this current moment, the Red Sox still have not been eliminated. So Take that for what you believe, folks. <laughs> What's the magic number? What's the magic number? Uh, I don't think there is any magic left. Other than <laughs> Point two five. To you. So, <laughs> Tom, do you have anything else to add with this? Because I do want to talk about Aaron Judge and Albert, almost Mister Seven Hundred Pujols. Add, add to the to the Red Sox. Yeah. Any any other trash you want to add to the pile? No. Uh, uh, no. They're just they just suck this year. Wow, so putting the big words out there. When Tom says it, it is yeah, when Tom wait. When Tom, Tom says Tom, they Tom, suck, Tom, the it weight of it. What he says. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about Aaron Judge because the Red Sox and Yankees will be facing off in a four-game series at Yankee Stadium. Aaron Judge is very close to shattering the Roger Maris 61 and could be propelling himself to be with uh, breaking Barry Bonds' record for home runs. He is sitting at 60 home runs right now, folks, with about two weeks to go in the season. He's having an incredible year. Incredible year. Yeah. So, average home runs. He has a legitimate great shot at winning the Triple Crown. I mean, he's just uh, powering through the home runs and the RBIs this season. So he pretty much has that in the bag. Um, obviously, 
the average. It all comes down to how well he hits the ball the rest of the season. Um, right, right now he's on pace for 66 home runs. Um, but, I mean, who knows? With his power and wherever, depending on where he's playing, it could obviously be more. Um, what's cool about the Roger Maris record, though, is that Maris had hit it, uh, hit 61 home runs in the 1961 season, which was 61 years ago. So it would be pretty cool if, you know, Judge does break that record because of like the, the numbers and how they match up and everything. And I do know the Maris family is a part of any kind of celebration ongoing with the Yankees. So they're going to be a part of any of this record breaking run that goes down. So that yeah, they're, they, at, they're at oh, the game. They've been at, the, they've been at all the recent games and they're going to continue oh, so, to go until something happens. That, oh, that's awesome. That's, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. On that Roger Maris front, have you ever seen the movie 61? Uh, yeah, I watched it. Actually, that's like a, a great movie before. that was done. Billy Crystal yeah. was behind that directing. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was one of my, when I was younger, it was one of my first real kind of baseball movies that I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's kind of it's pretty cool. Um, good yeah, acting. Bar- Barry Pepper and uh, yep. Tom Jane. Yep, as that's Maris exactly. And uh, that. yeah, it's Marison. Uh, oh God, Bill, uh, Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle. That's yep. right. Mick. And one of my thoughts, just to end it on that note, uh, on that one, uh, if uh, if you didn't have any other thoughts, one of my favorite Norm McDonald jokes was about Mickey Mantle. I <laughs> I do two things well: get drunk. I play drunk baseball. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. that, was, that was that back in the day. Yeah. That was that back in the day. And both, yep, have sadly passed passed on. Roger Maris had um, uh, lymphoma cancer, passed away in 19, I think, 85. And then Mickey Mantle, I want to say, was 95. Yeah, it was like mid to late 90s. He passed. Yep, yeah. Something like that. Um, Albert Pujols, guys. Here's a guy that amazingly is still playing baseball. Started his career in 2001. I remember even as a kid getting an Albert Pujols, Ichiro Suzuki double card for a baseball card and just being like, oh, my God, these two are going to be the next amazing things and truthfully are. It's incredible that Pujols still playing, having a pretty phenomenal and spectacular season at his age. I think he's 42 playing for the – coming back to St. Louis. I think he's going to get – that 700. I really do. I think he's what at six. Is it 699 right now? Or is it 698? I think it's 698, but it could have been 698. Yeah, 698, but he really doesn't care about the home runs. He's just playing for the love of baseball. I think it was pretty interesting. I saw a report saying, you know, if it comes down to the very last season and pool, a uh, very last game of the season and pool holes is up just kind of let the ball roll and have them run and get that 700 just to kind of do it. Wouldn't that be something, you know, get the bit, get the base hit or something, let it, let it just go and let him get it. If in case he doesn't get it. Cause I, I do think this is it for him. Yeah, probably. I mean, he really deserves it though too. Cause he's one of those guys that were playing during that big uh, steroid era. And I, I'm pretty sure he never used them. So yep. There's never been a report about anything like that. never been a report, but who, I who mean, knows I what players do. I mean, you could say Aaron Judge is on HGH right now. I mean, look at the health he's had. One of his first healthy seasons he's really ever had in, in baseball, putting up average and power numbers. It can absolutely be – it's fair game. You can totally speculate and say it's a contract year. Judge is doing something. They're just turning a blind eye. Who knows? Yeah, but I mean, to be at, you know, at the age that Pools is at and to be able to reach that milestone is, is something pretty big, especially with the team that you first started with, too. Correct. Yeah, no. I was going to say, um, anybody else have anything on the baseball front? I got nothing. Because we do want to transition quickly into the Celtics because breaking news came into the desk here just about before everybody closed their eyes for bed. Some probably didn't sleep because everybody was on edge hearing the report about I'm Doka head coach of the Boston Celtics having some sort of issue going on where his season could be in jeopardy from being suspended from a personal matter that happened behind the scenes. We got the Woj bomb of that. That was a whopper last night. 
and leaving a lot of people kind of restless. What the heck is going on with the Celtics? This morning, we find out that there was some sort of a personal matter going on with an assistant coach, female on the Celtics staff, that was deemed unacceptable behavior from the Celtics uh, management operations, and they are trying to take care of this matter as we speak. So it leaves us kind of speechless here, guys, on what the heck happened. Yeah, I mean, you you had texted uh, texted me and the rest of our management group uh, when it happened when you found when we heard, when you first heard about it. And uh, one of the first things I said was it's it's almost kind of like that whole Tyler Sagan uh, thing back in the day with the Bruins after they won the cup and everything. Um, but I mean. It, it's now going to be a matter of who's going to be the coach to at the start of the regular season. I don't think, I don't think he's going to get fired. I don't, but I mean, it's a possibility that he gets suspended for the whole year. Mm -hmm. I, if I was the Celtics, I mean, I know it was part of like the whole agreement that something like this shouldn't happen. Um, but if I was the Celtics, I would want to keep him on because he did get us to the championship. Um, and it would be a pretty dumb move to, you know, completely remove him from the team as a whole um, because he is a good coach. He does, I believe he has a good relationship with all the players on the team. Um, so hopefully they can come together without him for however long he's suspended and be able to uh, win, get to the playoffs and win the championship. Um, and hopefully everybody stays healthy because if anybody didn't know, uh, Jason Tatum was also injured during the finals and was playing with a, a couple injuries. Oh, we lost you, Tom. Phil, what's your what's your stance on this? I happen to be I have a double screen, so people are watching, seeing me kind of go back yeah. and forth like this. It's an ongoing story, so I want to make yeah. sure that we have the correct information to share with you on anything else that's kind of gone down. As of this moment that we are recording the show, he is still employed by the Celtics. So, Yeah, it looks like all reports are pointing to he will be employed. Uh, and Joe Mazzula, one of his bench coaches, would take over for the, for the tenure that he suspended. And it's looking like a one-year suspension. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski is the first one to break it, apparently. Yep. And like you said, Nick, it was last night. And we were talking off here before we started this about how I went to bed. I woke up to my friend, my friend's text from last night and five in the morning. I woke up to it like, what? And Ume Ododa, this on top of the, um, which it, not as obviously not as heinous by any means and also very manageable. The um, Time Lord Robert Williams getting his knee cleaned up a bit, which, you know, I, honestly, like that's what I kind of expected to happen right after the season ended. But it looks like as they're getting ready to go into training camp and everything, he's like, oh, I got I got to do something. So he will miss a little bit of time at the beginning. Are you uh, concerned about the knee overall in the long haul for Robert Williams? Uh, sure. No, that was a very real concern when they brought him back. And I know a lot of people, rightfully so, even um, are, are one of my favorite uh, an, uh, analysts of the Celtics. I, I might mind it going blank, not Scal, but of uh, his uh, partner in crime. Oh God! Why can't I Buzz think of Light here? And Buzz Lightyear, a little bit, yes. Uh, <laughs> That's no, uh, uh, what's his name, Chris Forsberg. Not Forsberg, uh, his, his broadcast partner. Oh, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike, Mike Gorman, Mike, Mike Gorman. Gorman. Yeah, sorry, 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 Mr. Gorman. Yes. Uh, his daughter was in a short we did years ago, horror short. Hmm. Look it up. It's called Shook. Our movie, hard so broadcasting kind of runs in the in the Gorman family. It does, yeah. And she yeah. used to work for the Arizona Diamondbacks. She might still oh, right okay. now, cool. and she just had a kid. So congrats to uh, uh, Mike and cool and uh, to Kristen. But no, uh, Mike Gorman had said it during the playoffs. Like he felt like maybe they rushed him back, uh, and that it could ruin, you know, ruin his career. And that's one of the things. But honestly, that's if they would have won it, you probably would have had uh, a little bit. Uh, you would have felt a little better about it, but now you're coming back and now he's got to clean things up. Who knows what's up? And that even wasn't that, that wasn't his primary, um, you know, point of contention when he first was drafted. His hip was the issue. 
when he first got drafted. And that was actually something that sidelined him a little bit when he first started out. So, yeah, a little concerned, sure. Uh, I'm more concerned they don't have a real backup center. And maybe they have some D-leaguers they can get. And they were even talking about Dwight Howard or some other people. I don't want to bring Howard in. But to the Ume, Ume Odoka stuff, yeah, yeah, I, I don't uh, don't have, you know, don't go against uh, the company policy of having sex with your coworkers if it, uh, and don't think you have enough power to uh, hide it because only you never can. You know, Benjamin Franklin, you know, the, the best two people that you can, would, I'm butchering it, but the, you know, the only way you can keep a secret between two people is one of them has to be dead. So, I mean, or buried in the ground. So, I mean, that's yeah, kind of somebody how that goes. absolutely spilled the beans. Well, and I think also uh, on the radio, they were talking about how the uh, person with the keep uh, saying consensual relationship, which is great. I hope that's the truth. Uh, it, it sounds like the substance are trying to get ahead of it, which why wouldn't you? And, you know, put, uh, put themselves forward from it because they don't want to be caught in something. Looks like the woman involved in the relationship with Lume is uh, uh, bringing forth a lawsuit. But we'll see how this all plays out. I, you know, it's all so bizarre. Like after such a great season, or at least end of the season and just, you know, yeah. might not have landed where you wanted, but you're on your way. And now you have the Robert Williams stuff. And now you have Ume being out. For Gallinari the season. also out for the season got, with, his, right. uh, with his injury. Yeah. So that's a depth move. Yep. That's going to be very hurtful. They were banking yeah. on him to be a great addition on the bench. Correct. No doubt. A great spark, a great, like yep. uh, three point shooter microwave. and everything. Yep. And now you don't have that. Um, you don't do, have that. No. I do want to, let you know that there is um, some speculation going on right now on on Twitter, where I get most of my information from our, sure. our lovely sources out there. Chris Mannix from Sports Illustrated. Oh, I'm a big fan of Mannix. That Imu Doka is heavily considering resigning um, to avoid yeah. any kind of firing and anything to let him kind of do his own thing. So mm. I think he'd rather. I think the Celtics are trying to give him the high road in a way. So if the option is out there, if he just wants to resign instead of being fired, yeah. there's that. And mm -hmm. I am going to throw this into the ringer right now. I think you will be seeing a return to the sidelines for Brad Stevens. Oh, wow. So sudden in the season. Yeah. I don't think that with the direction the team is right now, you want to shake too many things up. Again, it could be the assistant coach who was with um, Udoka. He's gonna. He's new into the system, though. There's a whole new well, he's, coach he's coming since, in. Well, he's been there since 2019 under Brad Joe Mazzula, yep. and he. Yep. I think he also did some stuff with the. Uh, he, this would be league. the number two, though, that was in command from last season. The number one assistant is now the Utah Jazz's head coach this season. Well, I th uh, actually, I think no, I think uh, Joe Mazzula. I think was well. Actually, you might be right, but I think he was. I think he actually uh, applied for that and, and didn't go for it, Missoula. Yep. Uh, but uh, you know what? It is uh, it is kind of crazy. I mean, I don't think Brad will step down to take it. And I could definitely see, and there have been reports, because I guess uh, Ume has been involved in kind of this kind of chicanery before uh, in previous uh, teams. Uh, he, so ha he, he has a shady behind the scenes yeah. relationship with people of sorts. And I kind of say Allegedly, that like that yeah, sure. because you've got to believe whatever you want to believe. But the things that we're hearing in the chatter is that whether this is because he's in a position of power yeah. or this is something that he kind of forces his hand, no pun intended on that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't want to get into that. But uh, with, with these relationships on things, because he does have a relationship, not married or anything, with another um, woman that has, has a child with. So Nia Long, yes, yeah, so they're engaged. Yeah. So that's but that's a whole that's definitely something life. morally. I think oh, you sure. have to stand by what the Celtics are doing because a lot of people look up to these players and coaches and stuff, and you need to do the right thing. And this well, looks like one of those examples of the Celtics trying to do, you know, the right thing from stuff. So well, they have a company policy about it. And a lot of an ongoing and, 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 situation yeah. that's still happening. When we get done with our show, we could be hearing that Udoka has decided to resign. We don't know. We're just telling you the news yeah. that we're hearing right now. So you have a better idea of where things are at right now. 
And the just other thing that's out there, there's another rumor that because of Brad Stevens' friendship and coaching uh, hierarchy that he's worked with in the past, Frank Vogel is a name that has come out as a oh. for the Celtics to entertain as their coach. So yeah. that's where we're at right now. Wow. Well, I mean, that's, and just to go back and I'll say it again, I apologize for repeating, but yeah, that it's not just a morality thing per se, but it's part of the policy of the Boston Celtics and a lot of teams across the NBA, not to do, not to have that, those types of relationships. And I, it just that it, regardless if it was a moral thing, a moral stance they're taking, this was something that was implicit in their guidelines as an employee-employer relationship. Like you shouldn't do X. I do want to tell X. you, Phil, and I and I talked about this before Tom joined us in. And Tom, you feel free to interject on this on this too. But this whole situation, if Udoka was still going to be with this team, none of this information would be coming out. Let's be honest and let's be real to all of you here. This is a whopper of a personal matter that got leaked to the media by somebody in the operations department with the Celtics. If they didn't want people to know about this, this would have been thrown under the mat. This information came out because I strongly feel Udoka is not going to be a part of this team moving forward. There's no way that all this information coming out with the story behind what happened, you're going to stand by that purse. I don't see that happening. I don't. So I think there's going to be a change of guard here in the next, could be day, could be minutes, could be half an hour, a few hours from now. We will have some clarity on where this team is headed to start their season very soon, in my opinion. But don't don't you think that it would be they would, the Celtics would still uh, suspend them, and then they would have to come up with some garbage excuse as to why they suspended them? I, I feel this information would still come out, even regardless. Oh, you know that's a good point, Tom. That's a good point. If he Tom. violated it, he they definitely would have had to. They would have had to address it if they couldn't, especially if there was a lawsuit coming forward. But. Yeah, I mean, I see that. I see this as a whole, like put getting in front of it. I see just in general, uh, just with, you know, this is a very delicate issue, and the times we live in, and you know, time, you know, this should be kind of how it is anyway. But times we live in, it just you have to so get this, ahead of it. You have to separate yourself from the situation. All I can take away from this is that if I was, say, the boss, say if I was Wink Grossback or. Brad Stevens or anybody that's a part of or Pagliuca, whatever their name are for being ownership and management of the Celtics. If something like this happened within my organization, I think that I would handle it between the two people, not be talking much about the, the, the why just say, this is a personal matter that was done. We're going to take care of things behind here. That's all the information I can give you. There's too much baggage and information that now the media knows about. Now all the speculation starting with what's going on next. Again, putting, putting this out there for people to know, that does not look promising for the future here of Udoka in Boston. That's just, again, my feeling. Tom's can be different, Phil's can be. But I just want to at least articulate how I'm feeling towards the matter with what I think is going to happen here. Now, t now Nick is distancing himself from our opinions. So we'll, we'll see what happens. What scandal I mean, comes out from this? A different kind of but breed we, now. But I mean, this is like I said earlier. This is kind of similar to the Tyler Sagan situation, almost kind of thing. And they kind of swept all the all the information. But much more quiet though on on the Sagan thing. Again, and from just but looking at it, in my perspective. But they still got rid of him. They so got to rid your of him, but you didn't hear who it was with outside of a little bit of chatter compared to this. I mean, I just think mm -hmm. this is a whopper. It's a wow. It's a so what was it? Bomb. <laughs> was the Sagan thing similar? Because I know he was seen as like a party boy. He was traded was off just... because he was sleeping around with the player's wives. I see. Sorry to wow. be blunt, but that's... No, no, no. I mean, that's not... I mean, that's as tactful as you can get at that, at that point, but... Aiden Horton but know... had to get far away. He went to... Where did he go? To Edmonton? 
He went to the no, he went to the stars, didn't he? Or no, no, hell Dallas? no, did he go to the stars? Hell no. no. I thought he did. No, <laughs> that was no, Sagan. Dallas. That was Sagan, yeah, Sagan. I'm sorry. Where yes. did Nathan Horton run away oh, Horton, to? Sorry. Winnipeg. Horton. Winnipeg. Winnipeg Jets. Shipped him off. Shipped him no, off to Canada. To, Get to, far away from that kid. He went to Columbus. They traded oh, okay. him. To- I, I knew it was something. All right, fine. And then, we'll call and it now, Columbus. Now he's with Toronto. He's so still the fantasy is real. Sailed, he sailed off with Christopher Columbus into the ocean blue. Good eye. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. This is. It's going to be weird coming back from this. I. Who knows? I mean, I was telling Nick off air. I was reading about how the Minnesota president of uh, Minnesota Timberwolves president president of operations last year in 2021 went through the same thing, and he he kind of resigned. It kind of was that same deal. It looked like, and who knows here? I mean, I, Ume is a lot more respected and a, has a lot more clout, and it's it's a, it's bigger. It's it's a coach, so. Uh-huh. We'll see. Is Rick Pitino know. available to sub for a year? That's a good oh, one. Oh, no. That's no a way. good one. Yeah, he ruined the Celtics that. for so many years. Rick Pitino's ruined. not walking through that door, folks. No, thank God. Um, I wish I had more time to talk about what the Bruins are going to be looking like with everything um, heading in there, beginnings of training camp and stuff. But I do have to, we do have to call it quits for right now because oh, – give it, give it a minute. Give us a, a, a Bruin minute. I just, I, I just with the Bruins. The only thing I'm really concerned with is the defense and the healthy health of the defense. Um, and Zdeno Char, in case anybody knows, knew, didn't know, um, is retiring and signed a one-day contract with the Bruins to retire as a Bruin. So, much respect to him for that. And I know on our next show we will get a chance to talk more about the direction the team will be heading with new coach Jim Montgomery. Maybe there'll be some news about a, a extension with David Pasternak for a long-term deal. And we'll get more into that kind of stuff too, but we're happy with the Bergeron and the Krejci moves on this note. I do want to let um, you know that you may be hearing more of me in the near future. And here's the new information that I have to share with you. So as of right now, I am a finalist to be one of the co-hosts for the very popular uh, bastards of Boston baseball podcast. So I want to thank all of uh, my supporters that have been out there that have continued to watch face the facts and deliver. I'm still going to be doing our show like we do once a month, but this is a new uh, journey and a new opportunity that could be a nice little door open kind of way for me to continue broadcasting and be more informative with a bigger audience. So I am looking forward to seeing what happens next. I should know more information soon. So again, that podcast is the bastards of Boston baseball if you're sick of me, I'm sorry, but here I come. <laughs> uh, well, congrats and good luck. And just to remind people, actually, the new probably doing this once a month yep. on the reg now. So be on the lookout for that. And thank you. Good luck, Nick. And thank you, Tom, Absolutely. for making yourselves available. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's going to do it here for a great first uh, episode back from our new season here for Face the Facts. And we will see you again real soon. We'll hope for uh, more good things coming for our big Boston teams and we'll see you again real soon.